शांति 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 जय जय राधारमण हरि भोल हरि भो जय जय राधारमण हरि भो reincarnation and rebirth requires either that we have personally very clear, very convincing memories of past births, which the overwhelming majority of us don't. I mean, there is a, there is a reason that curtains drop. And I'll tell you, when people go to Puja Swamiji and ask him about their past births or past lives, he always, always tells people, first figure this one out. <laughs> do not, do not allow yourself to get wrapped up in, oh, what was I before? What was I before? That was, if you've, if you've figured this one out, you've got a lot of extra time and space on your plate, sure. But at the sake of not giving the time and attention to this one, don't give it to past births. So the question becomes challenging because the only way to have that direct experience is either to remember a past birth or to die now, hoping 
that you're going to stay conscious into wherever you're going, which of course we have no guarantee that you will. The other way to do it though, here's what I would say, is don't, don't require that you have direct experience of rebirth and reincarnation in order to believe it. If I say to you, there is an electrical outlet, stick your fingers in it, are you going to do it? No. Why wouldn't you do it? Have you ever stuck your fingers in an electrical outlet before? So why wouldn't you do it now? You've done it before. How do you know what's going to happen? Really, how do you know what's going to happen? Yeah, I see other people do it. Huh, right? <laughs> seen other people do it. <laughs> And even if you haven't actually seen someone do it, presumably at some point in your life, someone you trust, a parent, a teacher, said to you, do not stick your fingers in that outlet because you will get electrocuted. And you didn't need to test it for yourself because you had faith in the person who taught you that. And then maybe, should you be the scientific type, maybe as you grew, you started studying a bit about electricity and you started actually understanding how it worked. But I mean, I don't have any idea how electricity works and I still wouldn't stick my finger in a socket because I believe all the people who have told me that I would get electrocuted. The reason I give you that example is in order to believe in it. You don't need to actually have experienced everything. If I say to you, jump off the roof, would you do it? Why? Other people die, <laughs> Other people die of course, but they die because there's this thing called the law of gravity. Now, I don't need to have personally experienced that law of gravity. People I trust, teachers, books I trust, maybe I've studied it in school, that guy Newton, <laughs> right? He gave us these, these laws of physics. We study them, we understand it, we believe it. We don't actually have had to have the apple fall on our head or fall off a building in order to believe in gravity. And so for this, allow yourself the possibility of believing something even without personal experience of it. If people you know, either personally or you know them through studying their body of work, have said this, if lineages you have faith in, Hinduism, Buddhism, have said this, if scientists you have trust in, the ones who make the documentaries, the, one who write the, who write, the ones who write the books, if you have faith in them, allow yourself the possibility of believing it the same way that you believe in the electricity that's in the socket even though you don't know it or the law of gravity even though the apple didn't fall on your head. That's one way in. Here's another way in. In rebirth and reincarnation, I keep getting new bodies, but there's one part that's the same, right? That soul. When Lord Krishna's talking about the soul being eternal, never born, never died. Well, if I can have an experience of soul, then I don't necessarily have to have had an experience of my body dying and being reborn. Because in my experience of that which isn't my body, I can understand 
how it could take other forms. I understand how it's not contingent upon this body, which by default means it existed before the body existed. It will exist after the body exists. So even though I don't necessarily have the experience of remembering a past life or the experience of dying and being reborn, if I can connect with my soul, with myself, in meditation, if I can have an experience of the part of me that isn't this body, that isn't the physical body, that isn't my brain, that isn't my mind or my emotions or my thoughts, then I tap into that which is taking new bodies. So that would be another way in. And I think if you do both, you're probably close enough. But here's the very last piece of that. If you don't actually believe in rein reincarnation and rebirth, don't worry. Really, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. As long as you believe in the existence of your soul. Because otherwise, it's all about just the body. Then it becomes just eat, drink, and be merry. So whether you believe that the soul takes birth once and this is it, or whether you believe it keeps taking birth, either way, don't worry. As long as you understand you're not, you're not the body. You have a body. You need to use the body. But you're not it. And the last piece, though, that I would want to say to you about the video game is that's not actually why we're here. And yes, it is, it is mind-blowing. The, the teaching that I've heard is imagine a mountain a mile high, a mile wide. Okay, That's a tall mountain mile high and a mile wide. And imagine that once every hundred years, a bird that has a silk scarf in its beak flies over that mountain and rubs the silk scarf across the mountain once every hundred years. The amount of time it takes the silk scarf to erode the mountain is as long as we have been doing this. Now that, that shatters my mind as well. But instead of it feeling like a video game, because the video game is the I am my body, I am my mind. I am the one shooting down asteroids, or I am the one, you know, playing this race car, or I'm the one who has to, you know, climb the ladders. You can tell I haven't played video games in about 30 years. It's all... <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's all Donkey Kong and Pac-Man. You know what? No, those were sort of my last video games, asteroids. But nonetheless... Whatever video game it may be, that's assuming I am the body. That's assuming that I'm here identified as the body. I'm the one fighting them off. I'm the one climbing. I'm the one jumping. Oh my God, I lost my life. But if you can identify as the one who's been doing it, as long as that bird has been running its silk scarf over the mile high, mile wide mountain, it actually brings about an element of peace. Because suddenly, your dinner that didn't have enough salt in it doesn't matter much. This person who was supposed to meet you who's half an hour late, it doesn't matter so much. But 
it shouldn't detach us completely. And I mention this because when you say, I'm getting fully detached from it, it feels like a video game, that's not actually the highest goal. It's a, it's a great place along the way because otherwise you are the character in the video game. So that's obviously not where we want to be. Becoming the player of the video game, it's better. But ultimately, that still is of this body. I'm playing that game. I'm moving the joystick. I'm hitting the missiles or whatever. That's not who we are either. And the point is not how detached can I get from it, but rather in it, because I have a body for a reason, in it, in this life, rather than seeing it as a video game to play. How can I see it as a duty to fulfill? Because that's what we're here for. It's not about winning or playing till your quarter runs out. It's about using the experience to recognize who you really are. And when you do, then actually the, the urge to get out of here and be done dissipates. Because the experience here actually becomes a lot more pleasant. The experience here is something that we're running from only as long as I'm identified as this body. And so we actually stay connected, very connected to the creation because it is a manifestation of the creator. So the goal is not detach, disconnect, become indifferent. The goal is reattach to the divine, to the truth, such that, yes, absolutely, your, your stress over little, little things, it will go perfect. Your identification with little, little things, it will go perfect. But your ability to use your body, to use your mind as a tool in God's hands to do your duty will increase. And that's what we're here for. It's not about how disconnected can you be. It's about how sincere can you be in fulfilling your duty while at the same time knowing that, yeah, it's all a drama. And this is where Lord Krishna gives us that beautiful line, remember me and fight the war. Not either or. It's not get lost in the war. It's not identify with the war. But it's also not leave the war. Remember me. And the remember includes all of that. Remember who I am. Remember that I'm you. Remember who you are because if I'm you, then remembering me is remembering you. Remember all of that and fight the war. And fight it well. Fight it fully. Fight it sincerely. And remember me. <laughs>